the topic under discussion today is MEBSs or ME biases. Let's continue our discussion. Before I get right into the discussion, I would love to tell you people about the very points that are going to help us understand this topic in a very easy way. Now, what are the points? The very first point will be what is MEBSs? Second point will be what is the next name of the MEBSs? Third point will be the difference between dysentery and diarrhea. And the fourth point will be the cause. What is the main cause of MEBSs? And the fifth point, we'll be discussing how this MEBSs is caused. And in the sixth point, we'll be talking about the drugs used to treat MEBSs. One can also say that we'll be talking about the pharmacology or MBCs. Well, these are the different names given to the pharmacology. I mean, the drugs used to treat MEBSs. So let's get started from the very first point. What is MEBSs. In a very simple way, in one line, one can say that MEBSs is the intestinal tract infection. An intestinal tract infection is actually called as MEBSs. More specifically, this is actually the infection of the large intestine. Now, let's come towards the next point. It is also called as amoebic dysentery. What? Amoebic dysentery. Now here we got the term dysentery. One must know a little bit about diarrhea also. Let's compare these two together in a very simple and short way. When the stool is passing in a liquid way, means when a person is having a loose motion, and that liquid is moving very frequently, and if that stool contains blood and mucus, then that is named as dysentery. What? Dysentery. And if the stool is passing through in a frequent way, means in liquid form, loose motion is happening to a person, then that condition is known as diarrhea. In diarrhea, we have stools in a very frequent way, loose motion, and whereas in the dysentery, we have the loose motion, but including that, there is blood and mucus also seen. And that's it about the dysentery and diarrhea. Now let's come towards the cause. What is the main cause of the MEBSs? We have protozoans, named is Intamoeba histolytica. Very prominent cause for the amoebic dysentery. Remember, we do have some bacteria that are responsible to cause dysentery. That is not amoebic dysentery, that is bacterial dysentery, okay? We are not going to consult that side. So, you must keep in mind that the, both are responsible, whether it is protozoa or bacteria, both are responsible to cause dysentery. Now, this is not going to be the bacterial dysentery. This is actually the protozoal dysentery, named as amoebiasis, caused by Intamoeba histolytica. Now, one can guess from the name of this protozoa, int amoeba, int antrum, intestine, amoeba. It is a protozoa which is causing infection in the intestine. Histolytica, histo means tissues. Lytica lysis. This amoeba is going to infect intestine and then what is going to happen is the tissues will be damaged. Very simple understanding from the name. One can understand if one concentrates. Well, now let's come to how this intermeba histolytica is going to infect intestine and cause the lysis of the intestinal tissues. Let's get right into it. Well, the food and the drinks that you take, if that food or drinks contain entamoeba histolytica that will enter through your mouth, will come towards the stomach, then as it reaches the small intestine, this cyst, which is actually the entamoeba histolytica, will start preparing itself for the multiplication or for application. So as it reaches the large intestine, here multiple copies will be synthesized. Those multiple copies are actually mobile and they are named as trophozoite. So what is gonna happen right now here is cyst is gonna be converted into trophozoite. Now these trophozoites are actually responsible to cause damage to the intestine. Okay, so what is going to happen now? Very simple. These trophozoites, when they reach the intestine, they will cause the infection. And the meanwhile, that infected person, when he's passing the stools, that stools will contain mucus and blood. In the very initial stages, there will be the only mucus, okay? Is it will get worsens, then there will be blood also available, okay? So, a time comes when it causes further damage to the intestine. In that condition, what is going to see? In that condition, ulcer is seen. Now, in that state, what is going to happen then? Then these trophozoites find their way inside the body. Then from the intestine, they start moving towards the liver, 
lungs and brain. They reach the liver and lungs uh, oftenly, okay? Oftentimes they reach the liver and lung, but in a very rare way, they also reach the brain. And as they reach here, they will cause the abscess in the liver, lungs, and brain. Now, have you got the way how this amoebiasis is causing infection? Now let's come towards the drugs to avoid this infection or the drugs used to treat amoebiasis or one can say that in shortly now let's come towards the pharmacology where we will get the information regarding the drugs how they are going to destroy this protozoa in Tameba histolytica. We have uh, actually three classes the very first one is mixed number two luminal number three chloroquine which is actually the only extra intestinal class now what do i mean by the only extra intestinal class where all these drugs have got multiple actions some of them are showing the actions in the intestine we group them in the luminal group and whereas some of the drugs they are showing the actions both the intestine and in the periphery we can say that extra intestinally that is in the liver uh, lungs and brain whereas some of the drugs are showing action only extra intestinal region now what are those drugs and how they are going to do their actions in the very first class we have mixed mixed drugs now these mixed drugs include nitronidazole and alkaloids in the nitronidazole we have metronidazole tinidazole and etc nidazoles are available now these all nidazoles are responsible to destroy to kill this intermeba histolytica in the intestine and also in the extra intestinal region okay so that's why we are placing the metronidazole and tinidazole all the nidazoles in the mixed group and in the same mixed group we have some alkaloids the drugs obtained from the plants named as emetine and dehydroemetine these drugs are also responsible to play the same job as like the nitronidazoles they are also responsible to destroy or to kill this uh, trophozoite whether that is available in the intestine or extra intestinally so that's it about the main understanding regarding the nitronidazole and alkalides well regarding these drugs point of view they have got uh, several way of action but one of the uh, mechanism of actions one must know regarding these uh, uh, nitronidazoles like uh, metronidazole it is having nitro group that nitro group is responsible to undergo certain conditions means like this uh, nitrodazole will be first of all reduced into active species then those active species are responsible to fight against these uh, intamoeba histolytica means against these protozoans so what will they do they will simply target the dna and proteins of the intamoeba histolytica of the protozoa of this trophozoite you can use any term for that of well the specific term is the trophozoite whether it is available in the intestine or extra intestinally these all drugs are actually responsible to fight against them well now let's come towards the luminal one now luminal are the drugs that are actually only specific for the luminal region means they will have their action only in the lumen now this cyst when it was converted into trophozoite in the intestine and now if we indicate these drugs like idoquinol and deloxamide furoate peromycin and tetracycline these all have function where in the intestine now this idoquinol and deloxamide furoate they will destroy the this trophozoite when the cyst is converted into trophozoites now these trophozoites will be destroyed by these iroquinol and deloxamide furoate in the intestine whereas peromycin and tetracycline these are the antibiotics that are actually responsible to kill those bacteria that are helping these protozoans simple as this protozoa gets entered into the body it will convert from cyst to trophozoite now here in the intestine we'll be having the trophozoite now in the intestine trophozoites and bacteria they both will be available in symbiotic condition so in order to destroy their symbiosis what we do will indicate antibacterial means antibiotics and along with that will indicate idoquinol and deloxamide idoquinol deloxamide furate will destroy the trophozoite whereas the bacteria which was helping this trophozoite that will be destroyed by the paromycin and tetracycline i hope you got well, if still you have a question, drop in the comment box. Then we have the next one that is third, that is chloroquine. This is actually only used extra intestinally. How like, very well, simple, is this trophozoites enter into the body and they reach the liver, 
lungs and brain mainly this point is well known regarding the chloroquine that they are responsible to kill hepatic trophozoites those trophozoites that have reached the liver and like this they will destroy this chloroquine will destroy the trophozoites when they reach the liver and that's it all from my side